Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to study specific types of operators which are called isometries. Now, we have already been studying different uh, types of operators, uh, maybe all of it is uh, getting a bit clouded in your head, but uh, we'll, towards the end, uh, we will also, you know, sort of summarize and uh, maybe not in this lecture, maybe in some other lecture, we will summarize all the various different types of operators and what to keep in mind, etc. You know, I mean, so, so it will eventually, uh, hopefully, will be easier for you later on. But for now, let us just go through the various types of operators and uh, what they mean. So, already we have seen, uh, you know, uh, self adjoint normal operators. The basic thing to remember, so, so always it is confusing as to me, you, can, you may remember the definitions, right? Self adjoint is A equals A star, normal is A star equals A star A, but what is the crucial defining property? So, for self adjoint and normal, the crucial defining property is that they have an orthonormal eigenvector basis, right? So, that is a very strong property and that gives a lot of uh, properties, other properties that you may expect from these kind of operators. And then there were these uh, positive operators which on top of being self adjoint, they also have this uh, you know positive uh, uh, eigenvalues. So, that gives them a square root and they behave in some very nice way. The quadratic form becomes non-negative and then we saw how these operators and the spectral theorem help you solve uh, optimization problems in a very nice way. And then now we are looking at uh, another type of operators which are called isometries, okay. So, isometries are very special and uh, they are also very simple. You will see all these results are simple in some ways, but they just sort of add up uh, together in very interesting non-trivial way. For instance, uh, the projection operator is a great example, right? So, a projection operator has a basic definition and then you see it is uh, self adjoint, you see that it is positive, all these nice properties come about uh, in a very interesting way for operators. Okay. So, let us go ahead and study isometries and complete the picture as far as uh, type of operators are concerned. Okay. So, uh, here is a brief uh, recap of what we have been studying. Let me just uh, skip it for this time. Uh, Let us proceed. Okay. So, when we want to look at isometries, isometries basically mean uh, you can sort of split it as isometry. Uh, so, iso means something that remains the same, metric usually is the norm, right. So, isometry, when you think of an operator as an isometry, it is an operator that does not change the norm, right. So, that is sort of like a uh, meaning from the word itself, we will define it formally soon enough, but uh, that is what we are looking for. We are looking for operators which do something to the vector, but do not do not change the norm, okay. So, if you take once again uh, inspiration from what we know from two dimensions, we have always been doing it, right. So, we have been starting with two dimensions, looking at some property and then we are seeing how to generalize that, right. So, so if you are looking at two dimensions, uh, we already know a very popular operator which does this, right. So, that is rotation by an angle theta. Uh, this is a famous matrix cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos theta. If you put a x y, if you operate with this r, you get that x y rotated by that angle theta, right. So, it is easy to show. Now, uh, uh, if you look at it a bit more closely, it is sort of an interesting operator as in it does not have any real eigenspace, right. So, because it rotates by an angle theta, so unless theta is 0, right, so it, it does not really fix any line through the origin. Every line through the origin gets rotated. So, there is no real eigenspace. So, when you view it in the real, uh, uh, as a real space, uh, so it is a bit of a challenge to look at this. But if you go to complex, uh, once again it does not change the norm when, uh, when, when x gets multiplied by this, but there are eigenvalues and eigenvectors in uh, when you view this as a complex uh, operator, operator on a complex space, right. So, this is something interesting to remember. There is one more uh, type of operator uh, which is uh, basically reflection about a line and that also fixes the norm, right. So, here is an example 1 minus 1 which is reflection about the x axis, right, x, x, x goes to x, y goes to minus y, okay. And uh, this one you can see has uh, a proper eigenspace uh, representation, the x axis is an eigenspace, y axis is an eigenspace, x axis is fixed, right. So, whenever you have an eigenvalue 1, it means there is a line which is fixed, right. And, and that is acts, acts like a you know axis of the reflection or axis of the rotation or something like that. So, that, that is a eigenvector with eigenvalue 1, okay, nothing gets changed on that, okay. Y axis sort of gets flipped, okay, because of the eigenvalue minus 1. So, it is a couple of interesting examples of uh, operators in two dimensions which are isometries. They do not change the norm of uh, the input, right, the output norm equals input norm, okay. So, this is a property that we can see. 
So now of course our question is how does this generalize to arbitrary vector space? Now if I'm thinking of an arbitrary vector space, thinking of an arbitrary uh, operator, when is it an isometry? What are the various characterizations for uh, isometries in arbitrary vector spaces, maybe larger dimension vector spaces or even arbitrary abstract vector spaces. So that's where we're going to go uh, forward but we'll keep this as uh, sort of a uh, inspiration and see if something interesting or something similar to this happens in arbitrary vector spaces also. Okay, so let's go ahead. Here's the definition of an isometry. You have a inner product space over R or C and operator T from V to V is called an isometry if norm T V equals norm V for all V. Okay, so this is what I meant by saying isometry, it uh, does not change the norm, right. So the metric or the norm of V is not affected by T, okay. So what kind of operators are isometries? We, that, that's our main goal in this lecture. We'll try to characterize all the properties that it might have, okay. But let's slowly work, work our way through, look at a few examples, get some ideas and see where we go, okay. So first example is uh, a diagonal example, right. So always when you're in doubt about uh, operators, you always look for a diagonal example, right. So diagonal is very simple. It will give you a lot of good ideas on how operators will work. So if you if you were to pick a diagonal operator, okay, here's an example. If, if you have lambda 1 to lambda n on the diagonal, everything else is 0, then uh, the only condition you need is absolute value of lambda i should be equal to 1. Anytime this is true, it is an isometry, right. So you can see that if, if you operate it with x, you simply have you know lambda 1x, lambda 2x, etc. And then you take the norm of ax, you only get you know mod lambda 1 squared, mod x1 squared, etc. And if mod lambda i squared is equal to 1, then it goes back to the original norm, okay. So this is a very powerful example to keep in mind. A diagonal with absolute value 1 is a, a, an isometry, okay. So I mean when you say absolute value 1, you're thinking of the unit circle, isn't it? e power i theta in complex numbers you're thinking of e power i theta. If you are in real space, it's only minus 1 and plus 1, okay. So that's that's a nice example uh, to have, okay. So another uh, interesting example and this is an example in three dimensions and you can see this will also be some sort of a rotation, right. It fixes the x but then y and z gets rotated by theta, okay. In the y z plane, uh, you rotate by theta, okay. So this is an interesting uh, idea as well and, and this has a, you know, you can say uh, the x-axis is uh, fixed by this rotation. So x-axis is the axis of rotation and then uh, you rotate about the, uh, rotate in the yz plane, you rotate by theta, right. So theta anti-clockwise, okay. So that's, uh, that's clearly a rotation as well and you can prove it. You, you can write down x and then norm ax, assume complex also, assume x is complex and then write it down you'll see norm ax will be equal to norm x, okay. So this is also an example. So these are typical examples. Uh, a for instance, the second one is also a, you know, you can think of it as a isometry in real space, right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, interesting that way. Uh, and uh, A is actually real complex everything and so there's no problem here, okay. Uh, hopefully these examples give you an idea of how isometries are going to look. They're going to look sort of similar to what we had in the 2D example, right, not, not very different. So a couple of other terminologies that you should know, uh, in real spaces isometries are also sometimes called orthogonal operators, these are called orthogonal matrices, orthogonal operators, you will hear this. And also in complex spaces, isometries are called unitary operators, also you know unitary matrices, okay. So just like you know we kept saying self-adjoint, but self-adjoint in complex is called Hermitian, self-adjoint in real is called symmetric, like that there are multiple names and uh, here again isometry is what is the name that we are using. Uh, in real spaces, it's called orthogonal complex spaces, it's called unitary, okay. So this is, the, uh, this is the definition. Hopefully the definition is clear. Let's see what the definition means. You'll see in, in the characterization, uh, you, we, will, we will do a lot of simplification, okay. Uh, one interesting question we can ask is, say again, we, we asked in the examples, we looked at when are diagonal matrices, uh, uh, I become, when do diagonal matrices become isometries? We saw that the absolute value of the diagonal value diagonal entries should be equal to 1, okay. Now normal operators is another question you can ask. Normal operators are almost diagonal, right. There is a basis, orthonormal basis in which uh, it is diagonal. So you can sort of extend that diagonal idea to normal also. Supposing T is a normal operator, I know T can be written 
uh, in this form where e1 to en is orthonormal, you have an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors lambda 1 to lambda n is eigenvalues for t, okay, we know all this, this comes from the spectral theorem, okay, I am looking at complex uh, space here, okay. So if you start with an x, you can write x as a linear combination of e1 to en, okay, norm x squared of course is uh, x1 squared plus xn squared, absolute value, okay. If you look at tx, okay, so what is tx? If you have uh, x equals this, tx is simply uh, lambda 1 times x1 times e1 plus lambda n times xn times en, okay. It is almost like a diagonal, right. So x1 gets multiplied by lambda 1, xn gets multiplied by lambda n, that is what happens. This matrix, this operator is diagonal in this basis, so this is what you get. So 2x square is simply this, it is almost like it is diagonal, same thing, I mean whatever we did with diagonal will hold good here also. So we see that a normal operator is an isometry if every eigenvalue has absolute value 1. So that is the simple result here, it is sort of similar to the diagonal result but except that you know it is true for the normal operator also, okay. So that is interesting. Uh, so what is interesting is when we finally characterize, we will see that there are no other isometries, so I mean all isometries have to be normal, okay. Of course there is this complex uh, problem here but anyway it is okay, I mean real numbers after all are inside complex numbers so it is not a big deal. So there you, one can sort of say that there are no other isometries, all isometries will have to look like this, okay. So this will be a powerful characterization that we will do uh, to characterize isometries, okay. So that is is the next slide, okay. So this slide gives you uh, the complete uh, sort of characterization for an isometry, okay. We are going to start with an inner product space over real or complex and uh, S being an operator from V to V, okay. And once again we are doing this all of the following are equivalent, okay. So we have been doing this quite often when we say list a bunch of things and say they are all equivalent, any one implies all the others, right. So that is what it means. And how do you prove it? You sort of prove it in sequence, 1 implies 2, implies 3, implies 4, implies 5, 6 and 6 implies 1. So there is a cyclical thing, so anywhere you start you will go back and imply everything, okay. So that is the idea. Okay, so what it means, let us just quickly go through them. Uh, first is uh, if S is an isometry, we know that you know norm SU equals norm U, norm SV equals norm V, not only that isometries will have to preserve inner products, okay. If you have two, two vectors u, v and they had a certain inner product before you hit it with s, after you hit with s also, s u, s v have to have the same inner product. Remember in the definition of isometry, we mentioned we did not expect all possible inner products to be fixed, right. So we just said norm has to be fixed, but just because norm is fixed, inner product also has to be fixed, okay. So it is a very interesting little result, we will prove it you will see maybe some of you can think of the proof itself, the proof will work out quite nicely. So isometries preserve inner products also, okay, for two, two different vectors, okay. So once you preserve inner product, the other results are easy. So if you have an orthonormal uh, set of vectors, after you hit it with S, you will still be orthonormal. Of course, all inner products are preserved, so it will still be orthonormal, okay. Now the next result, right there exists one orthonormal basis such that this is true. Of course, if you know for every orthonormal basis this is true, so of course you pick one orthonormal basis that you like and this will be true. The 4 is not uh, too bad, but you know it is sort of like you know 4 implies 1, okay. So that is why you should see why that 4 makes sense. If there is at least one orthonormal basis so that after S you are, uh, you continue to be orthonormal, then S is a isometry. I S will I S will fix every inner, I mean uh, will preserve every uh, every inner product S will preserve every norm. Okay, so that's what that's how you read it. That's why this four is interesting. Okay, now the next step brings in the adjoint. Okay, so once you have that, it turns out uh, the the adjoint product operator adjoint product S star S equals S S star equals I, which is the identity. Okay, so it's a powerful result. So far, we've not seen something of this type, right? We've not really seen operators of this type. Uh, so this also means, of course, S is invertible and S inverse is equal to S star. Okay, so we saw one example when when you put the orthonormal vectors one after the other, you know that that for that matrix S inverse is S star, right? So it's it, we've seen this before, but you know if, uh, that isometry is the uh, actual uh, name for that operator when you have S equals S inverse equals S star. Okay. And from uh, here it is also clear that S star is an isometry, okay. So if S is isometry, it is a joint is a joint is an isometry, S times S star equals S, S star times S equals I. So, uh, so it, it, a lot of interesting things come about 
because of these properties. Okay, so we'll quickly prove it, and then we'll state a few more results, and uh, that will be the conclusion of this uh, lecture. Okay, so let's prove it. Uh, so, 1 implies 2, why, why does it, uh, if norms are preserved, why do inner products uh, have to be preserved? The reason is you can define inner products in terms of norms, right. So, we have seen this before in one other proof earlier when we did, looked at self adjoint, okay. So, if inner products, uh, inner products can be defined using norms, okay. So, given a norm, you can go back to the inner product. So, if norms are preserved under S, inner products will also be preserved under S, okay. So, I'll, I can just show you uh, one little writing. So, if you, if you have this, so SU comma SB equals norm SU plus B, okay. In the real case, in the complex case also the same thing works out, minus norm SU minus B squared by 4 and uh, uh, so how did I get SU plus V? You know, SU plus SV is S of U plus V, right. And now if uh, S is going to be preserving norms, S is an isometry, right, 1 implies 2, so S is an isometry. So, S preserves norms, so that is simply equal to u plus v squared minus u minus v squared by 4 and that is equal to u comma v, okay. Same thing in the complex case. So, you can show quite easily because inner products can be computed using norms uh, and linear combination norms, you know, not something else. Uh, if you preserve norms, you have to preserve inner products also, okay. So, that is a nice thing to know, right. So, so angles are preserved by isometries, right, norms are preserved. And if you have two vectors, the angles between them are sort of preserved by isometries. It is a good intuition to build up uh, in terms of how isometries work, okay. So, I mean 2 implies 3, 4 is sort of trivial. Once you have the inner product being preserved, if E1 uh, is orthonormal, S E1 uh, comma S E i comma S E j is the same as E i E j. So, if E i E j are orthogonal, S E i S E j will be orthogonal. Uh, everything is okay, right. So, it is the norms are also same. So, so 2 implies 3, 4 is quite easy. Uh, hopefully, you see 3 and 4 are sort of the same thing, right. If, if I mean any uh, inner product space has an orthonormal basis. So, once you have an orthonormal basis, you take that, you operate with S, you are going to get another orthonormal set. So, so 3 and 4 are sort of the same, okay. Now, 4 to 5 maybe needs a little bit of work. It is not too hard, okay. So, 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 4 is what? 4 is there is an orthonormal basis. So, maybe I should write that down. So, 4 basically says E1 to En is an orthonormal basis and SE1 to SEN is also an orthonormal basis, okay. So, 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 so what happens when I do S E i comma S E j, okay. This is, this is my starting point here. That will be equal to E i comma E j, right. So, that I know, right. So, any E i i j I take S E i comma S E j equals E i comma E j because this is just orthonormal, right. So, this is also orthonormal, this is also orthonormal, this is true. Now, this guy we can write like this, okay. So, you take one of these S's to this side. So, you see S star S E i comma E j equals E i E j. So, so, so notice this again. So, I am getting S star S E i comma E j equals E i E j for all i j, okay. For all i j, this is true. So, this is, uh, okay. So, this is a powerful property. So, notice E i E j, S star S E i E j. So, so you can write it uh, in the other way if also if you like, S star S minus i E i comma E j equals 0, okay. So, you can, if you want you can write it like this. So, so you see this S star S is going to be equal to i for, for if you just look at E i E j, but E i E j is actually a basis, okay. So, from here you can go to arbitrary uv. If, if I can show that this instead of eiej, I can put uv here, then I am done. And because eiej is a basis, that will also work out, okay. So, that is the basic idea. So, let us see how that is done. If you take an arbitrary u, which is some linear combination of uh, e1 to en, and another v, which is a linear combination of v1 to vn, you can look at s star su comma v, and then write u and v in terms of this expansion. 
and use linearity and you know other properties simplify bring it out you will end up getting a star s e1 comma e1 and then you can just drop the star s as long as you have only ei ej here and then bring in the ui uh, ui vi inside okay and then combine it again you will get uv okay so it's just a simple thing so you show it for the orthonormal basis it's true for arbitrary vectors as well so s star s u comma v equals u comma v so s star s has to be equal to uh, i right so for all uv this is true so it's equal to i okay so that's the proof to go from uh, 4 to 5 okay so once s star s becomes equal to i if you remember we, we remember if a and b are operators and a b equals i then b a equals i so we have we have seen this true right so this is from uh, very old results in basic operator theory we have seen when we studied invertible operators we saw that if a b is i then b a is also i so if s star s is i then s s star is also i so clearly this means s is invertible and s inverse is s star okay so this is the definition of uh, invertibility you can go back and check your very early results on operators i mean without any eigenvector any inner product or something we proved it right so this is uh, this is true the inverse is unique and all that we have proved before so this comes directly from that okay and uh, the last proof is to show that 5 implies 6 and 1 so 5 is uh, you know s star equals s star s equals i and uh, that implies s star is in a joint and also that s, s star is an in isometry and also that s is an isometry right so so that is uh, going full circle right 5 implies 6 and 1 uh, that's very easy to show okay so it's not very hard you look at norm of s star v squared is in a product s star v s star v and then s comes this side s s star s s star is i you get that name same thing with norm s v squared s v s v s star s v and then s star s goes away so this once you have you know 5 is what s star s equals s s star equals i so once you have that being i the way the norm uh, becomes same is also true okay so this has completed the proof so let me just quickly go back and remind you all the powerful characterization so this is the the 5 is sort of the most powerful characterization right if s is an isometry and 2 also is important if s is an isometry inner products are preserved not just the norms and then you have this nice s star s equals s star equals i operator joint product is actually equal to identity okay so that's a very powerful uh, relationship and that is sort of if and only if so a joint is also an isometry everything works out uh, in, in that okay so this is sort of a complete uh, nice characterization of what isometries are okay so a couple of corollaries uh, very quick and easy corollaries every isometry is normal right so s s star is s star i is i so clearly s s star is equal to s star s so that's normal okay so it's, it's a little more than normal but of course it's normal for sure okay and uh, if you think in terms of matrices okay so let's say somebody gives you a matrix and you want to find out if it's an isometry or not what do you do okay uh, matrix represents an isometry if and only if the rows and columns have to have unit norm and any two rows or columns have to be orthogonal okay so it's basically the columns should be an orthonormal basis rows should be an orthonormal basis okay if that is true then it's an isometry otherwise it's not okay so it's a very uh, straightforward uh, uh, way to define it okay so you can go back and check all our examples so you'll see uh, whenever we had an isometry all the columns all the, uh, will be uh, orthonormal basis all the rows if you take them together you will have an orthonormal basis maybe i should write that down that's easy uh, so if so in terms of matrices uh, all uh, you know, matrix of an isometry columns form a an orthonormal basis uh, rows also form an orthonormal basis so so basically what is isometry doing so just, right if you think about it once you have this characterization isometry is simply uh, taking your coordinates and then uh, you know multiplying by some orthonormal basis so so basically you you're just simply uh, moving to another basis which is in the which is uh, orthonormal in some sense right so it's, it's it's sort of simple in that way that way so this characterization is a very nice and complete characterization for uh, isometry okay so finally if, if you are in complex space if you're not worried so much about being real your eigenvectors being real and eigenvalues being real and all that you once you go to complex vector space 
you can very very easily characterize isometries using another way also okay s is an isometry if and only if s is normal right normal meaning there is an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors right so that is the same as normal and every eigenvalue has to have an absolute value 1 okay so this is uh, there exists an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors of s this is the same as normal right so if s is normal and its absolute values absolute uh, value of eigenvalue every eigenvalue has absolute value 1 then it's an isometry okay if s is isometry s is normal and eigenvalues have absolute value 1 if s is normal and eigenvalues have absolute value of 1 s is an isometry okay both of these are true so it's sort of a complete characterization except that you know i mean you, you have to go to uh, complex vector space you have to allow for complex eigenspaces if, if you don't want that then I guess this is not a very complete characterization if everything has to be real uh, then maybe you need a little bit more of a thing right so because this orthonormal basis may have complex entries right so uh, if you look at the example cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos theta if you want an orthonormal basis for it you have to go to complex right otherwise you're not going to get that a basis of eigenvectors for it you have to go to complex otherwise you're not going to get okay so if you're, if you're okay with going to complex uh, this works out if you insist on being real maybe you need something more but uh, you know this is quite nice you know this is very nice and complex is not too bad uh, in most cases okay so this is uh, an isometry a proof is very easy you know i mean uh, forward result if s is an isometry we know s is normal and if you have mod lambda i equals 1 we already proved it's an isometry right so we, we did a quick proof uh, for this result when is a normal operator uh, isometry for the converse if s is an okay so uh, i'm sorry so for the converse if s is normal okay so I'm, I'm sorry about this i think this is not quite correct so you, you should not have this uh so so i, I think i think i had the whole thing uh, uh, wrongly written out i think the proof goes uh, wrong so this is the converse sorry about that this is the converse and this is the forward result okay sorry so I, I wrote it down wrongly. Uh, so it's okay. I think the proof itself is okay. I've, I've just written down the result wrongly. Okay. So converse is if uh, S is normal, as in if, if, if there exists an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors, if, if it's normal and absolute value is 1, we've already shown. Okay. The converse we've already shown. The forward result is if S is an isometry, then of course S is normal and it has an orthonormal eigenvector basis, right? So this much is true. So the only thing we have to show is if S is an isometry, its eigenvalues will have absolute value 1. Okay, so that's the proof we have not done so far, right? If S is an isometry, then S is normal. I know that. So there will be an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. Okay, that much we have seen. But what about its eigenvalues? Why should its eigen why should it eigen why should its eigenvalue be uh, 1? Okay, so maybe maybe we already showed it, but anyway, we can we can prove it in one more way. Uh, just for us to be happy uh, but this will mean I'll have to rewrite this okay so let me just let me just cut it out okay so first was the converse this is the one uh, you can prove it in yet another way that absolute value of eigenvalue should be 1 uh, so supposing you say s e i is lambda i e i so these are the eigenvalues you can take norms if you take norms on both sides on the right hand side you will get lambda i e i the norm of that is just lambda okay not lambda, lambda i is the day of mistakes, quite a few mistakes are there, okay. So this is uh, lambda i, okay, mod lambda i e i and of course the left hand side is uh, norm s e i. Now s is an isometry, right? How do I go from here to there? s is an isometry. If s is an isometry and it has an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda, then uh, norm s e i is the same as norm e i and that's one. Okay, so you will get no absolute value of lambda i is 1. Okay? So it is very easy to show uh, that you know, eigenvalues should have absolute value 1. In fact, I mean you, you can sort of go back to our example and convince yourself that they should have absolute value 1, otherwise they won't be an isometry. Right? It is the same thing that we are doing here. Okay? So this sort of concludes uh, what I wanted to say about uh, isometries. Uh, isometries are very interesting operators. Basically, if you think in terms of matrices, uh, rows and columns are orthonormal. Right? That is a very easy characterization and that is a complete characterization for uh, isometries. Uh, you can think in terms of so many other terms, it's, it should be normal with uh, eigenvalues having absolute value 1 and all that. Uh, 
and the another interesting thing is just because it's an isometry it also preserves inner products okay so that also is very useful in practice so the fact that it's an operator that preserves inner products so people sort of say that if you have a vector space and if you use a isometry on it you're not really changing anything right so nothing is being changed inner products are preserved norms are preserved so the relationships between vectors are preserved everything is sort of exactly the same uh, but if you multiply with even an invertible operator which is not an isometry uh, then you know then you 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 are changing the relationships between vectors you are changing the vector in a product not okay so isometries are very powerful and they have a quite a few applications okay so that's the end of this lecture uh, thank you very much